Welcome everyone. My name is Claire Strader and I am here with Carrie Sedlak. Carrie's waving right there. She's the executive director of Fairshare. I'll let Carrie. Carrie, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and then I'll introduce myself second. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Hi everybody. I'm so glad you joined us today. Uh, I'm the director of Fairshare and have been for the last three years and was in a program manager position with Fairshare prior to that. So I've been with the organization for six years now, which have gone super fast um, and have had the pleasure of having a, a hand in all of our different programs uh, throughout those positions. And I'm gonna hand it back to my esteemed colleague, Claire, to continue <laughs> her introduction. All right, I am Claire Strader and I'm the organic vegetable educator for the University of Wisconsin-Madison Extension and also the Fair Share CSA Coalition. And in this shared position, I work primarily with organic vegetable growers. And one of the, the things that I do with Fair Share is also work on these um, ways to join the organization and, and be engaged with it. So that's why I am here today to talk with you all. Thank you all for coming. Carrie and I are gonna do a pretty short presentation about the, um, <laughs> Carrie changed the title, the farmer programs um, and possibilities for the, for fair share. And then we're gonna talk about those three engagement options that went out over the email and are hopefully why you're here. So I will, advance the slide. So basically the, the mission of Fair Shares listed at the top of the screen, our mission is to connect and support CSA growers and eaters. You see that I put CSA in parentheses this time. Um, and that's because CSA has been the core of, of Fair Share for a long time. It was started, the organization was started in 1993. It was started by a group of eaters who had heard about CSA or community supported agriculture, and they wanted to bring that model to Wisconsin. And so they reached out to farmers and asked them to please start CSAs in the Southern, in the Madison area, really in South Central Wisconsin, so that they could join those CSAs. They were pretty successful with that. In the first year, they had about eight farms in the coalition. The membership in the coalition has changed from that early number of eight up to as many as 59. Right now, we're at 40 farms in the coalition. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But that part of that growth over those years and that changing over the years is that we are starting right now to think about not being exclusive to CSA farms, but to also include farms that are that are growing small scale organic food for their local communities, whether or not they're using the CSA model. So that's why CSA is in parentheses right there. A little bit more, just a short version of the, um, add a little bit to the history of the organization. That photo on the left there is a photo of the first, it's the asparagus to zucchini cookbook, which was one of the first products of the coalition. And it funded the organization for quite some time. It was published in 1996 and allowed us to hire our first staff member. And, and that the sales of that book um, were really foundational to the organization. The, the sales of that book are not quite so much, not such a significant portion of the organization's budget anymore, but that resource is still extremely valuable. It was written both for farmers who wanted to be able to explain to, to their members how to use those CSA shares. And obviously it was written for those members as a way to really access and make the most of their, their CSA offerings. Fairshare now is funded through a combination still of sales, but also of events that Bike the Barns event in the lower central corner, the lower part of the, of the screen is a, our biggest event that has been put on hold for COVID the last couple of years, but it's a, an, an important piece of the organization that does a lot of funding for the Partner Shares program, which you're gonna hear about in a couple slides. In that, and then the, the other piece of it is that you know, shown on this slide is that from the beginning, the farmers that were part of the coalition were really founded in a lot of cooperation, knowledge sharing. They also did things like share 
products even to put in their CSA shares. They shared when someone had crop damage and lost all their pepper seedlings, for instance, that happened this year, then they were able to reach out to each other and gather more pepper seedlings to plant on the farm so that that cooperation is pretty wide ranging. It's definitely an organization where we feel like the more engaged farmers that we have, the stronger that we are as a whole, as an organization. Carrie, I'm gonna pass it over to you now. So we're going to talk a little bit in detail about some of our major programs and we'll start with marketing and consumer education. Like the, like all of our programs, these, uh, this has roots in the very beginning of Fair Share's history. The idea was to provide consumer education around what CSA is and the benefits of CSA, both for the producer and the consumer, um, and just providing promotions on behalf of the farms that were part of the coalition. So, of course, that's changed um, it's changed form over the 30 years. Um, and currently the major benefits in this area <clears throat> are uh, listing on our, our website, specifically within our farm search tool for those farms that are endorsed. And this tool, if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, I would highly recommend doing so. We've worked uh, pretty hard on refining it over the years so that it really uh, is maximizes the usability for the consumer side and uh, gives them a good sense of the best, you know, the, the good matches, good farm matches for their needs, their location, et cetera. Um, so all of the farms that are endorsed are part of that farm search tool. They have their own profile um, designed by the farmer themselves. Um, it's, to, it's in your words, your pictures. And um, now that we have these new levels that we'll be discussing in a little bit, uh, the, those folks will also be listed on the Fair Share website. Um, but the, only the endorsed firms are going to be part of that search tool. And then we have a uh, CSA signup campaign every year. And this is a multimedia blitz. Um, it really, we put a lot of messaging out in the world through social media ads, different print publications across the geographic scope um, that our farms are situated within. Uh, we do radio PSAs, we um, leverage press coverage, get in touch with different uh, press entities to do sort of, you know, in-kind specific um, pieces, articles around uh, the, the farmers and the coalition lifting up what they're doing. And we also develop different tools and resources uh, in the marketing realm for farmers and the coalition based on what we hear are the highest needs each year. So we have a mechanism through which this annual survey that Claire may talk about, but we have a mechanism through which we find out what, you know, what what are your needs? What do you need to sink your teeth in? What do you need resources around? And we respond accordingly. Um, and also um, we focus this campaign really, I'd say concentrated in February through June, but uh, we have the, the campaign as an ongoing aspect of what we do. We certainly are promoting fall shares, winter shares, renewals. Um, we're always talking about share signups in one form or another. And we always, we mix up the branding each year, um, keep it fresh, et cetera. So I'd say that's the, those are the main areas to talk about within marketing and consumer education. Um, and then moving into partner shares, Claire gave a nice intro to this um, program, which has been a part also of Fair Share since the very early days. Um, it's been a core value of the farmers and consumers that were part of forming the coalition um, from the very beginning that, that food access be front and central in our work. And so this also has evolved over the years and the form of the program um, currently is that we offer a sliding scale assistance or we offer sliding scale assistance of 25 to 75% up to $350 for a CSA share to eligible households and community centers um, or schools. And so what does that mean? Um, households is pretty easy. You know, you just look at the uh, um, eligibility guidelines there, which are currently 200% of federal poverty guidelines. And then community center schools, if they serve a population that is 50% or more of the population qualifies within those eligibility guidelines, then they also are eligible for the um, partner shares program. And we have, Oh goodness, I think 15 to 20 partnerships that fall within those 
uh, guidelines this year, many of which are facilitated by farms in the coalition. Um, they have a, a community center that they're tight with in their community or that they want to make sure that they're uh, supporting and they'll help facilitate those relationships. Um, we also offer flexible payment plans for members uh, that are part of the partner shares program so that they can pay in monthly installments um, over the course of six months or however long if they're doing extended season shares, they can go longer than that. Um, and we also provide SNAP benefit processing. Currently, that'll be at the endorsed, uh, these, these are all at the endorsed farm level, uh, but essentially the member will sign up through fair share and through your farm. They become a partner shares member through fair share, but they also sign up with you so that you're in close communication with them. But all of the eligibility, um, port the determining eligibility goes through us, um, setting up a payment plan, all payments go through fair share. On your end, it just, you, you get a check from fair share for the full value of the share. Um, in April or June, depending, that's nuance for you, but in April or June um, of that year that they've signed up. And uh, let's see, this past two years, we've served between 200 and 400 households. That's a little higher than our normal amount um, because of COVID. There has been some available, uh, there's been more available funds to support more subsidies. And we've been able to directly turn that around into more support for, for families. And we've seen record uh, demand for the program as well, like double or more than double of the um, applications have come in. So it's been great to be able to have the funds to, to provide to folks. I feel like I was going to mention one other thing. Oh, just as a note, we support the Partner Shares program. We fund it through a combination of channels being like the Barnes, our largest fundraising event, grants, um, we have some county level support, and then of course, individual contributions. Moving into the CSA Innovation Network, a fair share is the lead, on, or has been the lead organization in partnership with 14 other organizations across the US though, um, in creating this, this national network that lifts up CSA, supports CSA farmers, supports CSA technical assistance providers, like organizations like, pardon me, like Fair Share. And um, the, there's much to talk about within this umbrella, but basically what we do within that network is facilitate resource and idea sharing and uh, basically determine what the top technical assistance needs are for our farmers. And this, can, this is both locally, regionally, and nationally, um, and turn around some pretty amazing resources like Claire actually was the lead on developing an e-commerce report or resource, basically determining uh, which, in, by having conversations with farmers, determining which e-commerce platforms were the best fit for specific needs that farmers had. Um, so that's just one example. We also do like a renewals uh, campaign, um, create materials around that. We create materials, uh, promotional materials around CSA week, which used to be CSA day. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to be able to carry that work forward that used to be uh, carried forward by Small Farm Central, if you're familiar. They've handed it over to the Innovation Network, which is great. Uh, we also have a my monthly or bi-monthly webinar series, depending on how much is happening, uh, that focuses on different topics, everything from food access programs to workplace CSA to um, equity in CSA. And so if you're not signed up to get emails through the Innovation Network, I would highly recommend doing so. Um, there's good, really good resources in there. And uh, the big takeaway for how that connects to fair shares work is that as the lead organization behind it, uh, we have the incredible opportunity to have the folks that are within the fair share network be really crucial in informing what we work on. Certainly it's a national effort, but like we have such a good relationship um, with the farms that are part of fair share and the fair share network that, that those needs are really put, put high in our uh, radar or purview. And then also um, we can ensure that whatever comes out of the network comes directly back to you that we, you know, we're so involved in what's happening in the network that you're going to be connected to um, a lot of pretty innovative resources on a regular basis. All right, these next few slides are gonna be really specific to the farmer programs. We've talked a lot about CSA at this point, and that is really 
bridging both farmers and consumers. We're trying to, we focused a lot on the farmer face of that in this presentation, but now we're gonna get even more into the farmer part of it. Um, so these next slides are all the, the work that I specifically do with the organization and with Extension. And the, the first one here is this Organic Vegetable Production Conference, which was started in 2017 at the request of the vegetable producers in, in this area, mostly in South Central Wisconsin. <clears throat> the conference currently serves, it's a, it's a small intimate conference, only about 200 people attend each year. And those attendees are coming from the Midwest, not just from Wisconsin. And we do have a few attendees that come from either coast as well. The conference is designed to really serve the needs of advanced organic vegetable growers. So it's not for beginning farmers, though some beginning farmers come. It's really, as it's really a way to bring together, as I said, these advanced growers to really dig into the details and the technical pieces of what it means to grow organic vegetables. The, another um, feature of the conference from the beginning, it has been very important to us to make sure that it is accessible to farmers who do not speak English as their primary language. And so there's always translation and interpretation services at the conference as well. And we do try to draw speakers from a broad diversity of producers also. This next piece is another the, the um, farm labor programs. This, these programs are specifically coming out of, um, Carrie mentioned the annual survey that we do. Um, I mentioned that we have had up to 59 farms in the coalition. And so I did wanna touch on like some of the reasons why people have, why farms have left the coalition include some farms have retired, um, some farms have moved away from CSA as a marketing tool and others have left farming altogether. And some of the main things that we're hearing from in that shift of farms coming and going from the coalition is that the, the two big challenges we're hearing about are attracting labor to work on these small scale farms and also being able to produce, still produce a broad diversity of vegetables with the changing climate. So this, this particular area, these farm labor programs are trying to address one of, those, one of those two big concerns. And the two ways that we're doing that, we have developed a registered apprenticeship in the state of Wisconsin in partnership with the, um, the University of Wisconsin and also with the tech college program in the state of Wisconsin. This particular program, the apprenticeship is not available to farms outside of Wisconsin right now. And we do have a number of farms outside of Wisconsin. There are two in Minnesota, one in Missouri, and one in Illinois right now. Um, and we're very interested in, in developing relationships with more farms outside of Wisconsin. But the apprenticeship, as I said, is specific to Wisconsin. The next program that I wanted to talk about under this category is called Becoming the Employer of Choice. And this is a program that was developed by the University of Wisconsin-Madison Extension and specifically for dairy farmers. And right now the apprenticeship manager, Sarah Janes Ugortz and myself are modifying that program to be vegetable farmer facing. We're doing that with a small cohort of, of vegetable farmers um, from actually all those states I just mentioned. And that program is being, is really starting to be rolled out right now. We did our first presentation to, for the general public yesterday. And it's a series of um, 10 modules that go through motivating your workforce, how to hire the right people, doing reviews and feedback, managing conflict, all these different topics. Um, and it's, and, that, and the idea there is like, how do we as small scale organic vegetable farmers become the employer of choice so that we can have access to highly skilled labor that's interested in, in working on these farms. This next area is really, again, very foundational to a fair share. So field days and grower gatherings are tend to be a fairly simple sort of thing there we have a topic that we come together to discuss that can be in the field as you see in some of these photos it can also be over zoom as it has been more over the last couple of years we had a series i want to say it was six 
different topics that we discussed in the spring of 2020, specifically on how the how farms were going to adjust to meet the demands of COVID or the restrictions of COVID through CSA for sure, but also farmers market and other types of um, delivery models or I'm sorry, market markets that these farmers are serving, how they were going to work with workers on the farm, what level of sanitation was going to be required, etc. Like I said, in those early days, could you invite customers still on your farm for a you pick, that sort of thing. So field days and grower gatherings are an important piece of what Fairshare does and a long standing piece. This is where a lot of collaboration happens is in these um, grower gatherings and field days. The last area that I want, oh, no, I do have one more after this. The second to last area I want to talk about in terms of farmer programs is this on-farm research. This area was, was really brought in specifically to address what we were hearing around challenges that farmers were having relating to climate change. So right now there's a, um, I've been in, involved in, have initiated a number of research projects specifically looking at cover crop based reduced tillage as a way to absorb these extreme rain events that we tend to experience in the Midwest. A little bit, not so much as much of a little more drought <laughs> this year, but we still have had a, when the rain comes, it tends to come down heavy. And so how can we adjust and test different farming systems that would accommodate that. That's just one area of climate change, obviously, that farmers are struggling with. But this whole, the on-farm research program is really looking at what are the questions, the research questions that farmers have throughout the coalition, throughout the Midwest, and how can we design projects on farm that both compensate the farmers for engaging with those questions and doing that research and provide really important information information for this broader group of farmers, this, this research-based information. And then the last area, the last farmer program that I want to talk about is really about farm data. So we do a survey every year um, for the endorsed farms. We're going to expand that this year to include the affiliated and connected farms, where we ask a whole bunch of questions. And I'm I'm always a little shy about how many questions we put in that survey and pretty much every year the farmers 95% of the farmers say, Oh no, we want to keep all of those questions because we get so much good information back about what's happening on all of our farms. So we ask you can see the chart on the left there is looking at the that's the results of the 2020 question that we asked about the share price and you can see what the different prices are the max price the min price and the average price for those different shares that's the as I said the results of the 2020 survey there's a whole bunch more questions in there that we report back on and then on the right that is the page of the or the the intro page to that e-commerce report that Carrie talked about a minute ago that we did through the CSA innovation network that again was not limited to CSA those e-commerce platforms are relevant no matter or whether you're doing CSA or not, if you're doing online sales, then the information in that report is relevant for you. And we're about to launch uh, the 2.0 version of this, where we start gather information again and then develop the revise and update the report. And the information and the input into that report on the right is national. That's coming through that broader network of farms. And, and, the, and again, that's the CSA Innovation Network, but there are lots of farms who may or may not be doing CSA who participate in that kind of data collection because there's so much crossover if you're doing small-scale organic leaning vegetables. All right, that is, I'm going to conclude right there with the programs that Fair Share is doing. Did you want to add anything to that, Carrie, before I move on to this? Okay, so I'm going to move on to these three possibilities for joining Fair Share. Um, we've talked about each of these a little bit, endorsed, affiliated, and connected. Carrie, in particular, did some talking about the, you know, the things that were available to the endorsed farms, and I'm going to expand on that a little bit. So endorsement is the thing we've had for a long time. That is what started happening, you know, when the coalition was first put together. Um, farms applied to be in the coalition. They met with other farmers in the coalition and then could become endorsed farms. And what that means when, when a farm is endorsed or the benefits that the, the farms get when they are endorsed are these some of the things that Carrie was talking about. There some most of them are listed here. There's also if you go to that page on our website, which I can show you in a in a second, 
that will link to our whole endorsed farm handbook, which includes a lot more detail about what it means to be in, endorsed, both the benefits and the expectations around that. Um, but in the short version, um, getting that that listing on the Fair Share website is pretty valuable. We get, <laughs> Carrie will know the real number, but it's thousands of hits on that website in the spring as CSA members are looking for farms to join. They also, we also provide, as Carrie talked a lot about this, assistance with CSA sales and promotions, that SNAP processing, access to the partner shares program for financial assistance. And then that, that fourth bullet down, that deep connection with like-minded farmers, that's often what we hear that why farms are interested in becoming endorsed is because they want to have that deeper connection with people who are doing the same thing they're doing. There's, we also are, providing access now to some farm specific racial justice training and we're developing a cultural competency module for that becoming the employer of choice labor management series that we talked about and those are things that endorsed farms have access to they also have access to the to the benefits of affiliated and connected farms which i'm going to get into in a minute the expectations of endorsed farms are fairly concise so First, attend the farmer annual meeting, which that Zoom slide, that Zoom photo that I showed a minute ago, that actually was from an annual, a fair share annual meeting. And I put it in field days and grower gatherings because that's basically what the annual meeting is. It's a way, you know, we hear a little bit about what fair share has been doing. And then there's a lot of information gathering and information sharing among the farmers in the coalition. So it's a, we designed it to be a pretty enhanced grower gathering where we're really getting at what the issues are that farmers are facing in the past year and that in the upcoming year. And it is required to, as an endorsed farms must attend that meeting. There's also an annual survey, which we've referenced. You have to complete that and then pay annual dues on a sliding scale. Some of you will have questions about what the requirements are to be endorsed, and they're also pretty straightforward. So there's an application on which we believe it or not have really made a lot shorter that's available on the website. You can click on it. It's a, a digital survey that you fill out. Basically, you have to be doing CSA for at least one year, um, and you have to be either be certified organic or be or achieve certification within the first three years of your endorsement and you must be using organic methods whether or not you've achieved certification or not there's a few other pieces of that um, which we can get into in the questions but the the requirements for endorsement as i said are pretty straightforward and all those details are available in that in the handbook that i referenced then now these next two are new um, opportunities for joining Fair Share. The first is to become an affiliated farm. And as Carrie mentioned, one of the benefits there would be a listing on the Fair Share website with all of the affiliated farms. You would get free field days and grower gatherings, discounted registration at the conference and that labor management series that I talked about, um, opportunities to participate in that funded field research, and then assistance with organic certification, which is a big piece of this affiliated part is like because you have to be certified organic to be endorsed. And currently you also have to have a CSA. I should have mentioned that in order to be endorsed. This, uh, the affiliated place is where we're hoping that people who want assistance with certification um, and want that connection, whether or not they're doing CSA, that this would be a really great place to, to join in and become an official recognized um, part of the organization. And then of course, all the benefits of connected farms, which I'll get to in a second. The expectations here are also very straightforward. Complete a brief annual survey. It will be shorter than the one, most likely it will be shorter than the one for endorsed farms. And then participate in that Fair Share Farmer Network. So that means like perhaps joining a committee that's part of Fair Share, going to the events that we are putting on, that kind of thing. Like be participate with the with the with the other farmers in the network because that cooperation is such an important piece of the organization. And then also pay annual dues here. This is on a sliding scale starting at $50. Connected is the last the last possibility that I'll talk about. And this one includes membership in the farmer listserv. Many of you are probably already on that listserv. 
the, we're going to be changing the changing that listserv around a little bit, and so there will be you have to you will have to be connected with Fairshare in order to be on that listserv. That hasn't happened at the moment, but that's one of the things that'll be, that'll be rolling out with this connected um, this connected point of access. There, you, people will have access to the field days and grower gatherings and other educational events. Those will be for a fee. So we will be having a small fee for those field days and grower gatherings that endorsed and affiliated farms will still get for free, but that connected farms will need to pay a small fee for. And then access, oh, and I should have, um, oh, well, I didn't say this because it's a benefit of all the level, all of the endorsed, affiliated, and connected. If you participate in the survey, you get the results of that survey. And that's what I was showing you earlier when I talked about farm data. The expectations here, complete that, that brief survey and then pay dues, annual dues on a sliding scale starting at that the $25. And that is the end of the presentation, unless Carrie wants to add anything. And then we're open for your questions.